Hi, I'm Beto Sistos. <laughs> No, I am Beto Sistos. I am Beto Sistos. I am Beto Sistos. <laughs> we are all Beto Sistos. <laughs> and Beto Sistoses are here to tell you before this episode of Candy is Dandy that we want to tell you about another show about food that we think you're going to like to listen to. It is called No Bad Food. It is a podcast about great food and the people who love to make and eat it. It is hosted by real-life couple Tom Zalotnai and Tefer Ajamian. Every week, they dig into a different dish, meal, ingredient, cuisine, or piece of food media, exploring the history and culture around it, sharing favorite products and recipes, and learning from their wonderful guests. The only rule is that there is no such thing as bad food. They're anti-diet culture and see food as a holistic thing and not just as being about physical nutrition. They just wrapped their 2023 Munch Madness Bracket Tournament where they had special guests like Jesse Thorne and Amanda McLaughlin who helped choose the best food of the year. It's a perfect show for people looking to learn more about the food they love and challenge their preconceptions about it along the way. We think you should check out No Bad Food. If you like this show, you're going to like that. It's available through the Pod Cavern Pod podcast network or wherever you get your podcasts so that's no bad food and i'm beto sistos and i'm beto sistos <laughs> and now for your next episode of candy is dandy starring beto sistos and beto sistos and beto, beto sistos, sistos as beto sistos cerebus colon beto sistos <laughs> i think it's cerberus anyway here comes oh, candy damn is it. dandy <laughs> Hola. Hola, amigo. ¿Cómo estás? Greg, you were just doing Duolingo. What have you got for us? Necesito una <laughs> botella de vino. Oh. oh, see? 887 days of Duolingo, and I, I can ask for a <laughs> bottle of wine. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome into Candy is Dead. Or, uh, how do you say candy in Spanish? Uh, dulce. Dulce de, de, de dandy. <laughs> Dual says the dandy. Dual says the dandy. A much better name if you like alliteration. <laughs> Dual says the dandy. It's not too late to rebrand. <laughs> uh, this is Daniel Zaffron. Speaking of rebranding, about <laughs> <laughs> the sisters, Craig Gonzalez. And this is Candy is Danny, the Candy Review Podcast. So the way it works. Let them know. Tell we them. We talk a little bit in Spanish. See. <laughs> Every episode. Every episode <laughs> starts in Spanish. Yeah. And then we do some candy news. We pick a different candy every week. We give its history. We taste a review. And then we play a candy game. And that's the end of the show. Oof. And we don't accuse other countries of doing atrocities throughout no. history. We don't do that. Mm -mm. Not no. here. Only America. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and Germany. <laughs> and Switzerland, Switzerland by not doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The most heinous of crimes <laughs> in action. Hey. Eh? I mean, well... <laughs> I guess it is worse to not kill somebody <laughs> than kill somebody. <laughs> you got me there. Checkmate. You're right. <laughs> I mean, I can't say you're dumb for saying it if that's what I told the judge. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you not more evil than I? <laughs> you thought it. Yeah. I did. I <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you for letting me do it. <laughs> you made me who I am. <laughs> so as you know, we all have a, we always have a top of the show. Top of the show top to you. Top of the show to you. <laughs> okay, so this one, if you'll recall, in the Peeps episode, we had a very special musical guest. Mm -hmm. Named Timothy McJawbreaker. Oh man, he was. I don't know how we got he him. He's fantastic. How did he do? Uh, you see him later that day. I saw him later that yeah. day. He went under that bridge where Kurt Cobain was was living, yeah. and he killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> no talent that massive must Gone be. Too soon. It's yeah. a, it's a it, to it's be the vessel of that toll. much magic and yeah. talent. Uh, he, you were gonna intro him. What bridge was Kurt Cobain under? Um, the musician Kurt Cobain would frequently live under a bridge when it was too rocky to live at home. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it was very sad. When he was famous? <laughs> all, no, right, I, all right, why are we talking about it? Well, I get a Nirvana history real quick if you guys want to know. When he was famous? <laughs> yeah, no, before he was okay. famous. Well, that's sad. When he was famous, he was actively looking for bridges to hide from <laughs> MTV. <laughs> Well, that's been... I forgot to mention our Kurt Cobain segment of the show. <laughs> but okay, so here's the thing about Timothy McJawbreaker. Yeah. Because he had a very distinct way of talking. 
Mm -hmm. Is he named after jawbreakers or is his jaw broken? Oh, good question. Because he's kind of like, yeah, Yeah. he, he, there was, when he was a child, there was a very tragic. Jawbreaker uh, accident. Uh-huh. <laughs> he he got one of those oversized jawbreakers from the uh, local fair. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he tried to bite it. Oh, oh my god. god! And he was successful. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone came and punched him in the face <laughs> and broke his jaw. I can't believe the same guy who hit Houdini hit that kid yeah. in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. They say you have an indestructible jaw. Give me time to set it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the story of Timothy yeah. McJawbreaker. He got to the center of that jawbreaker <laughs> in one bite. That's why he's a legend, yeah. dude. Yeah. There's Lead Belly and there's Timothy Jawbreaker. <laughs> Timothy yeah. Mick Jawbreaker. Mick Jaw, excuse me. I You're forgot. Erasing his Irish roots. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that's been cleared up for me Yeah, because yeah. I, I haven't slept since that episode came out. <laughs> but of course, speaking of Timothy McJawbreaker, Ooh. we've got some candy news <laughs> from our newscaster, Walter Crunchbite. This just in. No, that's Nixon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 baby. Oh, I've got so That's Elvis. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Here, no, this is yeah. what this is what Walter Cronkite sounds like. Hello, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, America. <laughs> Japan is bombing Hawaii. <laughs> Whenever that's breaking news. They are what? <laughs> they, they are what? what? <laughs> <laughs> They're invading Okinawa. <laughs> <laughs> That's been breaking news. <laughs> this just in. They what? <laughs> oh, baby, that is not what America likes. Okay, so thanks, Walter Crunchbite. <laughs> Crunchbite. <laughs> Walter Crunchbite. No affiliation. Yeah. Okay, so this one, as you know, they're all titled. This one's called Take Five My Wife, Please. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm <laughs> Wait a minute. Hello. <laughs> you said what? <laughs> you said what? <laughs> this show should be canceled. <laughs> they don't have a boss? <laughs> 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 they don't have sponsors? <laughs> well, that makes sense. <laughs> so, in 2018, in Alberta, Canada, home of Halloween apples. Oh, Halloween apples. I try to no, forget Halloween and you keep apples. bringing me back. You can't forget it. Uh, uh, well, as of this recording, this might probably won't still be going uh-huh. on, but the Kings are playing Ed- the Edmonton Oilers the, in hockey in the playoffs. Yeah. And I keep seeing all of the Edmonton fans it, from Alberta, Canada. And I keep thinking these people, when they were younger, were going around saying Halloween, Halloween apples. apples. And there was nobody around to make fun of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Until the Kings came yeah. <laughs> Okay, so home of the Halloween apples, Alberta, Canada. A woman named Crystal Regeer Westergaard wanted to give her elderly mother one last taste. That's a name, dude. Crystal Regeer Westergaard. She's somebody that died in an Agatha Christie book? <laughs> <laughs> well, she was a duchess. <laughs> so she wanted to give her elderly mother one last taste of her child. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we're going there. <laughs> One last taste. <laughs> One last taste Please, for this uh, woman. Uh, hang on. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you bought what? You want what? You're reporting what? <laughs> you know that's not what I like. <laughs> Uh, so, so she wanted to give her elderly mother <laughs> one last taste <laughs> of, her, of her. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get through this, dudes. I promise. <laughs> I mean, well, I should mention th- it's weird. It says this in the article. Her mother, her elderly mother, was the town bicycle. What does that mean? <laughs> um, this is so mean. <laughs> Is that an elected position? <laughs> is it like mayor? <laughs> so she wanted to give her elderly mother one last taste of her childhood favorite candy bar, a Cuban lunch, which sounds just as dirty what? as we did. That sounds... This must have been... This was like some weird Canadian okay. candy. We do not know what a... Cu- well, no. Cuban stuff wasn't allowed in America. Yeah. So mm. We had Puerto Rican lunch. <laughs> so problem was... The Cuban lunch had been discontinued in 1991. So she decided to recreate it herself with the Mm. packaging and everything. Whoa. And it was apparently a really great recreation. Then she realized the trademark on that brand name had lapsed. So she bought it and restarted (gasps) it as a candy to big success with her company, Canadian Candy Nostalgia. Look at that. That's, hey. That's Crystal Regeer Westergaard. Oh my God. <laughs> the first. <laughs> the last. The first. The last. The everything. 
I'm so sorry. Can you say her name one more time? Crystal Regeer Westergaard. Okay. I mean, it's got like the best, it's a very Commonwealth name. Like it's got mm. the British roots and yet a little bit American. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a, a little name. French. Also like, it sounds a lot like Crystal Clear. Go ahead. Who's Crystal Clear? No, that's just a, a saying. Oh. It's Crystal Clear. <laughs> um, I was just making well, sure you weren't saying. What candy does she make? What is a Cuban lunch? I don't know. I didn't. I. I. Cause the, okay, we haven't even gotten to the story yet. We got. That st- wasn't the story <laughs> that she made. We, we got Cuban stuck lunch. on her. Give on her. And, and became famous. Her elderly mother, for some reason. <laughs> oh yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> a woman of that age, you're gonna get stuck on. <laughs> I bet you, Crystal Regeer Westergaard is gonna hear this. Yeah. And shame on all of you. All I did was a big bopper impression. Yeah. Get out of here, you guys. Yeah. They took over my seat. It was the Greg Gonzalez from Cigarettes After Sex he, came <laughs> he did this. Are you looking up what a Cuban lunch is? Yeah. Oh, oh. Tell us. <laughs> Keep the filter on. So you guys want to do a video? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pop-ups keep coming up, but I think I got it. <laughs> Let me show you. It's not so much of a thing as a show. Yeah. There's a Bluetooth speakers. We can play it for everybody. <laughs> Let's Did see. you find what it is? Yeah. It looks, I mean. <laughs> I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not limber anymore, but I can, you know, <laughs> with enough yoga classes, I could probably do that too. If I train. Yeah, if I train. <laughs> so the ingredients, according to this person's website, is two cups of peanut butter chips, mm. two cups butterscotch chips, mm-hmm. two cups chocolate chips. Oh, chips in that regard. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm tracking that's more. Like California Highway Patrol officers? <laughs> <laughs> like... Lays. Um, <laughs> so peanut butter, butterscotch, chocolate, crushed ripple potato chips, and oh, peanuts. Oh, that sounds really good, actually. That's yeah. pretty forward thinking because yeah, they came out with those Reese's with potato chips in it. Oh, it's like a peanut butter. It cup. is. Yeah. Oh my god. That's that cool. that sounds really good. Yeah. Wow. It's been lunch. Hey, look, Crystal Regeer Westergaard and her mother. I'm sorry about what we said, but yeah. you might get a phone call that sounds a little something like this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now that we've got that settled, let's get to the actual story here. So she's making this. It's all going great. Her yeah. elderly mother loves it. Then in 2021, she decided to do the same with her husband's old favorite candy bar, the rum and butter, which had I think we can <laughs> imagine what that is. Uh, Greg, get back. Turn off the family filter. It's actually a lot of seafood in that. Um, <laughs> strangely. Go, go ahead. Sorry. So the rum and butter had gone away in 1996. <laughs> So she decided to do this and it seemed like a home rum. (laughs) However, (laughs) it was the heart of the pandemic, 2021. And a ton of production delays threw a wrench in the works and shipments of the candies were coming in sporadically and that made orders slow down. And then all the back orders came in at once, but there weren't enough sales to keep up. So now this company has 133,000 rum and butter bars set to expire in <gasps> June 2023. Oh my God. And they are desperately looking for ways to give them away so that they don't have to pay to send them all to the dump. Oh my Schools God. Schools didn't want that many of them. Food banks didn't want that many of them. The Edmonton Oilers, as I was just yeah. talking about, the fans who once... Halloween appled all over the place and then the Kings beat them last night and they threw a bunch of trash on the, on the ice. <laughs> uh, welcome to Alberta. Um, yeah, you heard me, Crystal like Regeer, Westergaard. Malberta. <laughs> the Edmonton Oilers had to deal with other candies. Uh, they were uh, Candies that make you choke, am I right? <laughs> uh, cut to this episode comes out and they destroyed the Kings. <laughs> They've gotten rid of some of them, but they still have a massive amount of these things. They might end up having to give them to pigs to eat, but I know a couple pigs right here who wouldn't <laughs> mind eating 80, 90,000 of them yeah like you can if you go to the website canadian candy nostalgia you can email her but like i'm sure she's not just going to send us like yeah. four of them but yeah she send us like a hundred we'll yeah <laughs> we'll do an episode What's where we eat a hundred yeah. rum and butter <laughs> and we'll say all those nice things about her mom again <laughs> yeah and we won't do big bopper anymore i swear <laughs> i'm promising you <laughs> we'll, we'll move on to richie valens <laughs> which is more appropriate for this episode <laughs> but yeah i if you've got away but by june 2023 if you need uh, 133,000 discontinued candy bars, hey, let them know. Let them know. And that's been Candy News. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> baby! <laughs> the news is snooze. <laughs> You did what? My you plane. What? what? <laughs> okay, so let's get into this <laughs> week's episode. I mean, it was funny. Like, is Ghost finding out what happened? My plane, what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm a what? <laughs> 
Let's continue this fiery plane crash <laughs> of an episode. <laughs> okay, so Beto, you picked this candy. What do we have here today? Today we have Carlos Quintos. Okay, I was I I. Quintos. Isn't there like, because someone brought it into work one time and pronounced it in a very fluid Spanish speaking way of Carlo, mm-hmm. Carlo Quinto or something. like yeah, it, it exactly. really flows yeah. the way you properly pronounce it rather than Carlos V or Carlos mm-hmm. V. Oh, I, 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 Hello, baby. That's my Bob Newhart doing the uh, that uh, Bob you, Bopper. Um, you, you, uh, you, you what? <laughs> you, uh, you what? Baby, you know that's what I like. <laughs> baby, you, you know that's what I like. Bob Newhart. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Big Bob Newhart. Anyways. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you sure you guys don't want to do it for another minute? Help me. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> Okay, so tell All us. Right. A, tell, okay, first off, what is this? Yes, please. Have, have has anyone I ha- had? I have oh yeah, I've oh. had it once because I went into it thinking it was a dulce de leche thing, which I don't mm-hmm. think it is. And, it and is I was pleasantly not. surprised when I had it because I was kind of skeptical because a lot of Mexican candy is dulce de leche based, which I'm not a big fan of. Mm-hmm. But this, uh, it's been a long time. But we'll get ready, Daniel. Oh boy. Mm, boy, I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> off with his head. Yeah. Off with his head. <laughs> All right. Carlos Quinto or Carlos V or Carlos V. We'll go with all of them. Yeah, he accepts all. (laughs) Is a traditional Mexican chocolate bar that has been enjoyed all throughout Latin America for over 100 years. Oh, my So this is like the Snickers almost of 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 Mexico. Mm Mm-hmm. Each decadent bar is made from sugar, chocolate, cocoa butter, milk, butter fat, and various natural flavors. But what is it? It's a chocolate bar. But like, is there something in it or is it just chocolate? Uh, what makes it it? Oh, yeah, we're yeah. going to get to that. Uh-huh. We're going to get to that. Mm-hmm. Referred to as El Rey de los Chocolates. Oh, that's mm-hmm. even better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we can make a city out of that. <laughs> Our city's named after a queen. We can make a city named after this candy bar. <laughs> los Chocolates. <laughs> Spanish for the king of chocolates. Each Carlos Quinto bar depicts an image of its namesake, Emperor Charles V, of the Holy Roman Empire from 1519 to 1556. Whoa. Also known as Charles I, King of Spain, 1516 oh. to 1556. Wait a minute. So the... He was initially King of Spain and then... And he became the and then he inherited, Holy Roman Emperor? He inherited the throne Whoa. to the Holy Roman Empire. So he was running two empires simultaneously. What? Spain. There were Spanish emperors of Rome? That is I mean, correct. I guess that was part of Rome. Uh-huh. It's it's all the royal family. So wow. they're all... I, I imagine them all to be like Little Caesar, like all sort of like doughy Italian men. Remember the Holy Roman Empire is neither <laughs> uh, never Roman, Holy, holy uh, nor true, an empire. True, 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 it true. came after the actual Roman Empire collapse and is like an amalgamation oh, okay. of Germanic states. Okay. So, uh, here we go with the mm-hmm. Germanic states oh, again. Right. He's just trying to dodge Spanish Inquisition <laughs> questions. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, was he the Spanish Inquisitor? <laughs> Is that him? Because if so, I've got a few words for him. He was a hardcore Catholic, that's for sure. This guy looked, because the, the guy on the cover, it, he's like completely, he almost looks like a metaverse guy. Yeah, so the it's important to note that the like the advertising or the rapper has gone through a lot of changes. The yeah. older rappers had a more like realistic okay, image okay. of Carlos V. <laughs> it or, was like a Rembrandt. <laughs> because this guy's like pretty... White looking. I mean, he's Spanish. Oh, I mean, but he's, yeah, he's a Euro. He is a European man. Yeah. yeah. After all, he looks like he'd be in a Christian cartoon. I wouldn't watch. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's wearing like a Santa robe. Is that just what robe. Roman emperors? That, wore? that is like yeah. That's like a classic. Was Santa a holy Roman European emperor? <laughs> royal court. Huh. Yeah. So Santa was royal. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> King of the elves. <laughs> king of snow. That's weird for the iconic, the king of chocolate in Mexico to be a white guy. Uh, well, let's talk about that, Daniel. Okay. I would love to talk yeah. about that. Let's, let's talk about racial barriers. Yeah, um, A very special episode yeah. of Candy is Dandy. <laughs> Apart from battling the evil forces of Protestantism. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Settle down. <laughs> Don't get me started on Protestants. <laughs> 
<laughs> Charles V is best known for introducing Coco to the European royal court. Okay. Wow. During his reign... Hmm, I'm going to have to raid every country that has this now. <laughs> mm, tasty. During his reign, Hernán Cortés carried out the conquest of Tenochtitlan, which today is Mexico City, and among his plundered booty was Coco. Perhaps... This is actually debatable because there's little historical evidence to suggest that Cortez was the first transporter of chocolate to Europe. In the book, The True History of Chocolate, authors Sophie and Michael Crow write, No one knows for sure when Coco first reached Spain. There is no credible evidence to support the oft-repeated claim that it was the work of Hernán Cortez. He sent a ship to Spain from the coast of Veracruz in 1519 and visited Charles V in person in 1528 with a dazzling sample of Mexico's riches and wonders. He had a crunch bar. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What are you eating there? Oh, nothing, nothing. They call this Luca. <laughs> <laughs> Including dwarves, bouncing rubber balls, what? monsters, again, I'm quoting here, and albinos. Oh, so this is like a slavery thing. Mm -hmm. huh. Fans, shields, plumes, obsidian mirrors, all dubbed Mexico's riches. Uh huh. But no mention of chocolate. Most likely. <laughs> His lips are covered in chocolate. <laughs> no, that was it. Yeah. Nope. That's all we brought. <laughs> Wh where's the chocolate? Whatever that means. <laughs> What's that on your lips? You're bleeding brown. <laughs> I was eating poop. Sorry. It's a long ship. Caca. Yeah, caca. <laughs> More likely, it was that the Mayans introduced it to the Europeans, specifically okay. the Kekchi Mayans of Guatemala, mm. who lived in Alta Verapaz region. Here, Dominican missionaries led by Bartholomé de las Casas had, ta <laughs> <laughs> had taken <Boo>, over... Protestants! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever a Dominican is! <laughs> had taken over a delegation of Maya nobles to visit Prince Philip, son of Charles, in Spain in 1544. Mm. Amongst the other things they brought were receptacles of beaten chocolate. Okay. <laughs> because they wouldn't cooperate. <laughs> End quote. I know that was a long one. So the, essentially the old adage that Cortez brought yeah. chocolate back to Europe and that by doing so, Charles V introduced chocolate to the European court can be debated. Okay. okay. So okay, so we we learned this in the past. So chocolate from South America, Central South America mm -hmm. brought to Europe yep. and then replanted in Africa. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. So this is the inception point. Of, yeah, this of, is uh one of the worst atrocities <laughs> humans have ever committed. <laughs> hey, two of the worst atrocities. Uh, what was the Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What is obviously known is that the indigenous people of Latin America have enjoyed cocoa since pre-Hispanic times, long before Spanish conquistadors stepped foot on the continent. Did they still call it Carlos Cinco? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Quinto. Wait, Quinto? Cinco. Carlos Quinto. Wait, what? So so Quinto means fifth. Whereas ah, Cinco means okay. five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cinco. <laughs> <laughs> the Aztecs and Mayans considered chocolate a gift from the gods and used it in a decadent drink called chocolatl. Wait, so even the word for chocolate comes from a Mayan word? Mm -hmm. Wow. Chocolatl. Mm -hmm. Chocolatl, like axolotl. <laughs> <laughs> you said what? Uh, an axolotl is that like salamander, that oh, like Mexican right. salamander. Yeah, they're really Damn. cute. They're really cute yeah, ones. They're really cute. Damn, I Daniel. want a creature little Black Lagoon movie, but it's that. <laughs> it's an axolotl. <laughs> <laughs> Despite having a European on its wrapper, the origins of Carlos Quinto. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. Gross. Eat around it. <laughs> <laughs> Just ignore it. It's like a hair. <laughs> the origins of Carlos Quinto are undoubtedly Mexican. La Azteca Chocolate Factory began production of the bar in 1919 Whoa. in Jalapa, Veracruz. You may know La Azteca by one of their other products, Abuelita's Mexican-style hot chocolate. You're oh. kidding. Wow. Sold in the iconic yellow and red hexagonal box with the smiling grandma on the front. <laughs> An elderly mother. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very popular this episode. Same pose. Yeah. She's in the same pose as yeah. the, pose the huh. fifth. Huh. What? As I said earlier, 90s Bugs Bunny pose. Yeah, nice. For anyone who, who doesn't have one of these, it's he's doing 90s Bugs Bunny pose. Yeah, it looks like Tony Stark's grandpa with a crown. <laughs> 
wearing Santa Claus's robe and doing a <laughs> 90s Bugs Bunny pose. Yeah. <laughs> the company later moved to Mexico City during the 1930s. In 1970, Quaker Oats became La Azteca's regional distributor. Oh, really? La Azteca would later become a subsidiary of Quaker Oats until Quaker it was Oats? sold. Wait a minute. Wait, what does that mean? So... So Quaker Oats was selling the Mexican candy in America? No, no, no. Quaker Oats was a distributor of their candy oh, okay. in Latin America. So Quaker Oats is in Latin America? Quaker Oats has a presence in Latin America for reasons I'm not sure. Okay. Probably <laughs> oats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Knowing them, yeah. <laughs> most likely oat related. And it's and not Quaker related? <laughs> given their larger infrastructure, they helped La Azteca okay. to uh, distribute their okay. chocolates. Right. That makes a lot of in sense. In Latin America. This is what the Spanish said to the Mayans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to help you distribute <laughs> freedom. Trust us. Trust our infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened again. <laughs> La Azteca would later become a subsidiary of Quaker Oats, meaning owned by Quaker right. Oats, yeah. until it was sold to Nestle Candy oh, in uh -oh. 1995. Oh, oh boy. Oh, jeez. Oh. Is Ferraro looking for another candy to buy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's too bad as we discuss the yeah. human right. Mm -hmm. pot potentially. Pot no, I mean confirmed, but potentially still ongoing. Yes, that's what I meant. Yeah. Although Nestle slightly adjusted the Carlos Quinto recipe, it respected the chocolate bar's percentage of cocoa to cocoa butter, which is what differentiated this chocolate from others. Mm. Oh, I wonder what that means, taste-wise. Oh, you're you're gonna find out, dude. So, so this is kind of like if this. Well, okay. No, go get, well. If this is just a milk chocolate bar, this is kind of like, because we've been looking for eventually doing the big showdown of mm -hmm. like Hershey's versus Meggie versus Cadbury yep, yep, yep. versus Carlo Cinco. <laughs> <laughs> I accept. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's kind of yeah, like the, the it's kind of like the, Her the Hershey's yes, milk chocolate exactly. bar. Exactly. This of... is the premier Mexican chocolate okay. bar, or at least the most popular Mexican sure. chocolate right, bar. Right. 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 The standard Mexican chocolate. This is bar. the Hershey's of Mexico. Okay. Although Carlos Quinto was available in limited quantities as an imported chocolate in the United States, it was not intentionally marketed and sold to the American audience by Nestle until 2005. Mm. So, can the king of Mexican chocolate dethrone its American competitors? Mm. Let's find out. Let's find out. No. Didn't you? <laughs> no. Uh, no. No. I haven't had it yet, but no. <laughs> You've been wanting to do this for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, since the beginning. Mm -hmm. But there was some sort of shortage. There was. For, like, something with the pandemic. I don't know what happened. Mm. And couldn't find them for Because uh, I was looking over too. Over a year. Yeah. Over a year. And then all of a sudden, uh, strangely, I saw them a big box of them one day and I sent you a picture mm -hmm. and just by coincidence, your wife, Frances, came home with a big box of them. Yeah, a big box of like 36 of Whoa. them yeah. for like 12 nine or eleven ninety nine. It must have been just like Carlos Quinto Day yeah. <laughs> and they suddenly just reappeared and everyone got like notifications on their phone. Yeah. <laughs> it was the 5th of March. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> Europe Day. I mean, I did get a phone call. Someone did oh, say oh, something. Oh, no, I did. No, you did. Don't pick up. Don't pick up. <laughs> All right. I'll let it ring for now. <laughs> <laughs> Caller ID. <laughs> a big B is calling. <laughs> okay. So, so what differentiates it, you're saying, is the ratio of cocoa butter to... Yeah. And then I think some of the other natural ingredients, which gives it a distinctive flavor, which we're going to get into. Mm. Because Mexican chocolate is a different sort of chocolate, like it in is. terms of like the... It is more of a like a spiced cinnamon, nutmeg, yeah. Yeah. warm. Oh, the way you said that. Very rich. <laughs> what was the other chocolate we had recently that was really like spiced? Um, I think there was another chocolate. chocolate. Maybe I'm making it up. Uh, we had that really complex Ghirardelli dark chocolate. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. That had like fruity, nutty tones. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Of. Yeah. Uh. Was it a crunch bar? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You're thinking of crunch bar. Yeah, you're thinking of a Hershey well, Kisses. Yeah, crunch bar is more like a mindless snack. <laughs> <laughs> the epitome of America. <laughs> With no toads. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like eating mayonnaise. <laughs> so, all right. So this package, it says on it, 
mm-hmm. made in Mexico. I wonder what it said. Does it still say made in Mexico in Mexico? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, the Crunch Bar said made in the USA. Yeah, so you true. Know. I mean, this is in Spanish and English, but it is mostly in English. Well, remember, this is the Americanized version of Carlos Quinto okay. sold specifically to, to an American audiences. Because it says since it's Nestle, it does say Vevi Switzerland on the back. Mm-hmm. But where this was... is made in factories in Mexico. Okay. 100%. So it, it's not like Cadbury in America where it's made by Hershey. It's This is a Mexican-made chocolate bar. A product of Mexico. Product of Mexico, branded to Americans, shipped from Mexico, and sold in America. But is it made differently? No. For, okay, so it's made, it's just packaging? This is not an alter. Well, remember, Nestle altered the overall recipe for all countries that received this chocolate bar when they acquired typical European yeah. overlords gotta change it gotta change one thing yeah <laughs> yeah we took over the reins yeah condensed milk yeah but it's not like Skittles where Europe has theirs and we have ours. right 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 yeah okay. everyone's getting these or they're not getting them at so all. the equivalent Danielle down in uh, Zacateca is eating the same Carlos Quinto as I am right now correct but with more Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, how's his podcast doing? <laughs> Dulce de Dandy. Dulce de Dandy. Okay. <laughs> Hola, baby. <laughs> There's way more hot girls on that podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's still me, but it, you two are replaced by uh, the the dancers from Sabado Gigante. <laughs> okay, so you ready to, to yeah. let's open so this thing? The way I like to eat Carlos Quinto is... Okay. While it's still in the packaging, I break it into three little pieces. Ooh. It just makes it more It makes it more O C D accessible. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanna see I wanna see yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. thing in its glory. Do you? You gotta find your own way, Daniel. I'm not a <laughs> colonial <laughs> yeah. colonist of the mind. Oh look it it says on it Carlo Quinto mm-hmm. and Nestle and it has a little crown on the sea. It's small, Ooh. too. It's not like a regular American bar. It's like two inches. Yeah, we didn't even address. Yeah. This is tiny. Like, I thought this was a fun it's size or something. It's not tiny. It's, it's uh-huh. small. <laughs> no, this is the size they come in, which yeah. I appreciate because we have loved the fun size version of a lot of stuff. True, and true. it's probably cheaper mm-hmm. than what you're paying for a full-sized American bar. Oh, you could yeah. get two of these if you wanted. Yeah, nice, clean. It's got some shavings, some like chocolate shavings on yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so if you smell this... It smells great. Oh, like yeah. it smells it's got that spiced yeah. sort mm-hmm. of Mexican chocolate. Yeah. But it it also kind of the shavings it's almost like what you would shave onto oh, like to make hot chocolate yeah. or to make like brownies yeah, or something right. like that. Yeah. It smells really good. Like it you smells can amazing. you can smell the whatever spices are in it and maybe a little fruitiness in it. Yeah, Ooh. it smells so good. Yeah. Very rich. It smells like Mexican hot chocolate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man, that's great. It's, I think you're going to like it, Daniel. All right. I think I've had one of these once, but I do not remember it. We going in? Yeah, let's yeah, try this let's Carlos it. Quinto. I like to let it melt. You can bite it if that's your thing. I like to bite my tongue into three before. Hmm. <laughs> I have really good chocolate. Mm. Very creamy. Yeah. It does taste like Mexican hot chocolate. It mm-hmm. does. This it? Yeah, it's creamy. It's soft. You're getting that warmth from the spices or the natural flavors. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really, it's a, like very filling in the mouth. It's not waxy at all. No. Yeah. It leaves sort of a fruitiness behind. These two brown dots on throat. What's that about? You got, I don't have two brown dots. Oh, oh wait. No, I don't have two no. brown dots. Do you have a worm in yours? Mm. <laughs> yeah. You got the worm. Bato. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to the hospital right now. You know, it's, this is what you were thinking of. The flake bar. That's yeah. the one that we had that was kind of spiced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's got, oh God, it's kind of dry. <laughs> like after you've had a lot of it and mm-hmm. it gets in the back of your throat. It's, it's so, because it's so mouthy, it's so filling. Mm-hmm. It kind of like sucks the air out of you. That is such a rich taste. I would not Super want rich. a bigger size of this at all. Yeah. No, yeah, you don't need it. So That's a perfect size. Lush. It's good, but it is just a chocolate bar. It is just a chocolate bar. I mean, it's not, it's, don't it's, knock it because it's no, just no, no. chocolate, though. <laughs> We didn't say that about Ghirardelli. <laughs> well, Ghirardelli is more than just chocolate. But it, somebody had a flake bar and was like, I could fix this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's got... A good flake bar. It's similar flavor-wise to the flake bar with, without that weird dry flakiness to right. it. It's good, 
It's definitely not one of my favorite things ever just because it is just a piece of chocolate, but it's a good piece of chocolate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like already, like obviously compared to Meji, it's uh, oh, miles yeah. away. Yeah, like and player. even Hershey, if you know, remember last time I had a Hershey bar, I don't remember, but remembering this is definitely better than a Hershey bar. Yeah. Yeah. It's not waxy like a Hershey's. No. It's got better melting properties. No, this is good chocolate. Way more flavor. Yeah. This is not something you're you're gonna like devour. Yeah. This yeah. is something you take your time with. Mm-hmm. You have a little bar, maybe just half of it. Like I want chocolate. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want a candy bar. I want it. Like, you want bite chocolate. Into chocolate. This this will satisfy that urge. Yeah. It really has a distinct aftertaste of cloves or cinnamon mm-hmm. or nutmeg yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. If you like really breathe in while you have it in your mouth mm. and like all of those flavors come in, it really hits you with, with a fruity, nutty, or not nutty, but like fruity mm-hmm. spiciness. It's yeah. not spicy in like a spicy yeah. way, but mm-hmm. spice, mm-hmm. spiced way. Spiced way. It leaves a lingering aftertaste that's pretty it's like good. coating my mouth. Yeah, and I just oh, breathed yeah. in right mm-hmm. now and I got like, it like stirred the flavor. Yeah. Talking about the, the flakiness of it, like this shaved on top of ice cream or something like oh, that would man. be great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that was pretty good. You know those like Michoacan ice cream places? Mm -hmm. They sell like a popsicle with one of these lodged in there. Oh, that's perfect. It's really good. What? Like Like a like a chocolate like a paleta popsicle? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a chocolate one. It's a chocolate paleta. And they shove a Hershey or oh, a Carlos Quinto in that's it. That's great. Where he belongs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frozen in ice. Frozen yeah. until they can make him stronger. <laughs> that's how we stick it to the man. <laughs> <laughs> the ice is a metaphor for the indigenous people of Mexico. Okay, so where did you get yours? For Where did Francis get these? Um, she got it some hole-in-the-wall Mexican party store in LA. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't tell you, but she got a box of like, I want to say 36 for- Oh, okay. Eleven ninety nine. That's a crazy. What was that like forty cents? Because when I saw them in the f- swap meet, yeah, they were selling the boxes also for I, I guess probably that price. But they were selling individual ones for fifty cents each. Whoa. Yeah, I've seen them for fifty cents. I've seen them for a dollar. That's a little too much. That I is think. way too much. Yeah, Super Kings is guilty of that. They'll put yeah. them on and sell them for well, like I mean, a quarter to a dollar. It varies. Kings stick together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, a quarter is like. You can't not buy it for a quarter. Yeah, like yeah. that is a unbeatable price oh, yeah. for, for a quarter. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is worth way more than a quarter. <laughs> it's worth at least a uh, quinto more than <laughs> I'm curious to see what the going rate of these are going to be once they fully transition back into the American market. Yeah, I wonder if it's still, if they're still catching up mm-hmm. or if they're going to be they're going to have like the <laughs> Cuban lunch lady oh. 133,000 words. <laughs> Okay, so let's write down what we would give this okay. out of a rating 0 All to right. 5 cavities, 5 being the greatest. Hmm. This this is uh, well. I guess I'm going first. Yep. So this is another tricky one because, like, we almost have to do an episode of one that is going to be a five. So like, we know what to compare. Yeah. Because like we've a look bar. We've had <laughs> <laughs> big hunk <laughs> smarties. Like I said, we should do an episode of one that has a five. One that <laughs> deserves a five. Do you think there is such a candy? Oh yeah, like I, I. Okay, you know a candy. I, I don't want to say yeah, and he brings a crunch next time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guys. Go ahead. I, I don't want to jump the gun, but I feel like I would give a Reese's peanut butter cup or peanut M and M a five. Yeah, I feel wow. like I would. If you brought Reese's cups today, I'd give it a five without even eating it. <laughs> <laughs> you buy a Santa? <laughs> I have a shirt that says Reese's on it. <laughs> I do. I yeah. wore it once to one of these recordings because uh, the Snickers is my two point five. The peeps is my zero. No, what did I give a zero? I gave um, one of the like the the one of the peeps big varieties. Hunk equivalent. Oh, was the other one? Oh no, the yeah, it's the big hunk. Big hunk. And one of the peeps you gave a zero. I I never give anything oh, a zero, yeah. but I given a. We gave peepsy a zero. Zero point something. We yeah. don't. We don't. Oh, sh- we don't speak. <gasps> oh, no. oh no! Oh no! Hello, babe. <laughs> you don't speak about peepsy. <laughs> <laughs> so send a uh, diabolic doctor down here. <laughs> <laughs> so I I feel like I need something just so I know what a five is. Yeah. So for this one, I liked it. It wasn't that exciting because it is just chocolate, but it is really good chocolate. Yeah. I mean, it's it. Do you do you? I give it a three. Wow. I give this a three because it is a really good yeah. piece of chocolate that has nuance and depth to it and it sticks with you Yeah, and it was good. Yeah. What about you? I'm pretty close to you. I'm, I gave it a 3.25. What I'm most impressed by, it is really good chocolate. It's like straight 
up chocolate, yeah. no nonsense or anything. It's a little, little <laughs> stick of chocolate the size of my ring finger. And that's what I like about it most is the control. Yeah. Wait a minute. Your ring finger is as long. Oh, I guess you're kind of right. It is. Yeah. No, same as with long, the, the Not as fat. In, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, no. It came from a different direction this time. Uh, the hurt came from a different direction. Um, <laughs> old, sh- old stubby chubby fingers over here. <laughs> old sausage fingers over here. Are you holding a hot link? Oh, it's his hand. It's his hand. <laughs> Why are you waving those Vienna sausages at me? Also, my my fingers are full of sugar as well. <laughs> and the doctor said there's something I need to, I need to eat a, a cucumber. That's why his, his blues name was Cocktail Frank. <laughs> he used to play guitar real well until he had too much candy. Yeah. He sold his soul to Oscar Mayer. <laughs> it has like a level of control. Like it's not just a big American bar that's yeah. like way too much for you. Yeah. It knows like, oh, this is really rich so we can make it small. The way like a flake is really strong chocolate with all its faults and everything. It's also just like, it's like a normal practical size. Uh, a flake bar because the flake bar was really long but skinny. It was long, long and skinny, skinny. Mm. Um, <laughs> unlike Greg's fingers. <laughs> yeah, um, no, yeah, but it wasn't practical. It wasn't like shove in your pocket, put in a pouch. Exactly. This is no practical. This is yeah. like the size of the the smaller like Kit Kats that they give. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm like, are they? I guess I don't know my how long my fingers are. Yeah, you don't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I I gave it three point two five. I think it's a really strong candy. What about you? Man, I love this chocolate. I uh, grew up eating it. Reminds me of my grandma. <laughs> that elderly lady? Yeah. Is she the later on the uh, abuelita chocolate that, thing? That's, that's her? her? That's her? <laughs> that's her? That's the, you, oh, you have the abuelita? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh-huh. I think it's a delicious, rich, creamy, mm-hmm. complex chocolate. I enjoy it a lot. I give it a 3.5. Seven five. Wow. Look at that. So we're we're Strong. kind of uh, laddering up from each mm-hmm. other. Yeah. It's definitely in the three range. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a solid three something candy. Yeah. It's got a very Mexican flavor. Yeah. It, it's a, a unique Mexican flavor. What was the other candy that we were talking like? You could just melt it and drink it. I think we were talking about Flake Bar. Oh, we might have been. Yeah, okay. Because the flake bar had a lot of spices in it also. Okay, maybe, yeah. I, mean, I keep comparing it to flake, but it's it's sort of like the practical flake. It, it tastes, yeah. it's got a lot of similarities to a flake yeah. bar. I think in the Ghirardelli episode, we were talking about uh, like chocolate for drinking. Yeah, yeah. I think which predates chocolate bars. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of too. But yeah, there, this is in that category of like really, really fine, super rich chocolate. Yeah. yeah. When we talk about Ghirardelli, like that is sort of the... So far, at least, the best American chocolate. Yeah. I think uh, we could say probably is the best American chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. But it's such a different taste than this Mm -hmm. is. I think the the Mexican culture, the indigenous culture was like drinking the chocolate was steeped in their culture. So when they conceive, yes, pun intended, (laughs) when they conceive of chocolate, this is what we get a, a drinking chocolate flavored chocolate bar. Yeah. It's a, it's a unique thing and I and I enjoyed it. It's a little taste of old Maya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. Um I have some two did you knows. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you with give the, us the did you yeah. knows. How dare you not I did totally you know forgot. us. I totally forgot. I didn't know you. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that Carlos Quinto is so popular in Mexico that advertisements of the chocolate are regularly aired on television? Are they? Hmm. Have you seen any of them? I have. You Google some on YouTube. Okay. They're pretty fun. They're pretty high budget too. There's like <laughs> one they made during like the Pirates of the Caribbean craze. Oh my and God. And they're like pirates fighting and stuff. It's fun. Don't ask them where they're landing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask them what countries they're going to take over. <laughs> nice little pyramid you built here. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be a, a shame, shame if somebody, somebody <laughs> drank rum on top of it. <laughs> Did you know that Quaker Oats sold its Mexican subsidiary, La Azteca, to help finance its acquisition of the U.S.-based Snapple Beverage Company. Oh, oh weird. A God. purchase which cost them $1.7 billion. Oh, with a B? I wonder what I'd want more, Snapple or a Carlos Quinto? OG Snapple in the glass bottle? Yes. Yeah. New Snapple in that weird plastic bottle that doesn't taste the same? No. I haven't had a Snapple in a long time. Oh, man. They're not the same. Bunch of Did you Snapple like them simp. Oh, I love Snapples. Yeah, so good. <laughs> Simping for Snapple. This is our new segment. I love the uh, kiwi strawberry. That was my... Oh, yeah. That's number one. Yeah. Sure, dude. <laughs> I'm a Kearns boy. Uh-uh. What? Oh. Kearns. No, nah, I just like them. I think they're better. So. Oh. 
the oh, R the RC oh, cola oh of fruit drinks. Yeah, I, was like, I was like, what? <laughs> okay, so would you be excited to get this on Halloween? I guess we'll start with me. Um, yeah, I would be. And it's also already... It's funny that American fun size is a Mexican regular size. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be like a cultural thing. Yeah. It, it's a lot of chocolate yeah it's, oh, yeah, it's small it's so but impactful potent yeah it, it's potent. like i still my saliva is still thick from from eating this uh, thing the size of one normal human's <laughs> index finger <laughs> but yeah i would be excited to get this on halloween it's the perfect amount it's a different sort of flavor than what you're gonna get in a crunch bar or mm -hmm. something like that yeah i'd want it yeah absolutely if i saw this i'd be very excited I'm like oh because i've first of all never seen it on halloween and i don't know why i <laughs> haven't i live in los angeles so it should be <laughs> yeah. a more regular thing <laughs> It's because you go to Beverly Hills to trick or treat. Okay. So what? I go to Brentwood. I yeah. go to Pacific Palisades. I mean, money is better than Carlos Quito. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you ask for Carlos V in Bel Air, they'll actually bring a royal member of the family out. So it's kind of strange to and be careful. They'll give him right to you. They've got so many of them. Hide him. Hide him. The Americans. Um. Yeah, I'd be very excited to get this on Halloween. Uh, absolutely. Would yeah. love to get one on Halloween. Delicious. I mean, you have so many now that you can. Yeah, no. oh, I'm, I'm going to give them out yeah. for all my Canadian friends. Yeah. <laughs> I will be Halloween appling this left and right. Well, okay, so we've got a game coming up. But before the game, let's reiterate what we would like for you to do oh, for yeah. us this yeah. week. Send us in a listener question for us to answer at an end of a show. Candy is dandy podcast at gmail.com. Whatever you want to know about us. Yeah. Anything. Anything. Any Any single dark, thing. Twisted. Dirty mm -hmm. seat. We will tell you. Yep. How did Daniel perfect his big bopper impression? <laughs> <laughs> Was he doing it in front of a mirror on a landline <laughs> for six hours straight? So yeah, send us your listener question. Candy is dandy podcast at gmail.com. But I've got a game now. Oh, I am yeah, my, so this is my game. favorite part. Yeah, it really of is. Every episode. I, screw the candy. Yeah, I don't even eat candy. Yeah. I, I don't know what I'm doing I here. I just it. came for games. You <laughs> say that so often, I start to question your loyalty to the candy. <laughs> when are we going to just play games? <laughs> <laughs> well, someday the Candy is Dandy board game will come out <laughs> and it'll just be Candyland. <laughs> okay, so... I would call this game taboo, but to avoid copyright infringement, let's call it verboten. <laughs> this is a brand new game for us. We've okay. never played this before. Oh, I'm excited. So I don't know if you've ever played taboo. This is kind of like taboo. So I'm going to give you, there's going to be something that I have in my mind, and I'm going to give you individual words, mm -hmm. and you have to keep guessing until you guess what candy I am describing. Like, for example, if I said mm -hmm. crispity. Uh-huh. Crunchity. Crunchity. Buttery. 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 Butter well, finger. no, I'm not asking you to guess what words I'm going to tell you. You tell me what the There you butter go. Finger. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> a but, like my fingers, a butter yeah. finger. <laughs> but her finger. But her finger. Oh, but I barely know. <laughs> <laughs> butter finger. How about a, a ass a finger? <laughs> um, so. <laughs> You might want to pick your phone up for that one. Yeah, that's, that's a big bopper line. <laughs> Where, she knows what you like. Where, our, the network is calling. Yeah. <laughs> the big B is here. <laughs> so, all right, so uh, you guess what the candy is. Okay. There's going to be... Uh, together, separate? Together. Whoever okay. gets it first, just shout it out. <laughs> I've only got five for you. They will get more, you know, as it goes. So this one is kind of easier. So the first one, guess what... Cho what oh, thanks for the well, hint. Yeah. The first word, chocolate. Reese's. No. Uh, I mean, Hershey's. Okay. Maybe wait till you get a better idea. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Carlos Quito. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Honey. Hola. <laughs> uh, Le grande, bape. <laughs> honey. Chocolate and honey. Um, I don't know. Bitto honey. Oh, yeah. Bitto honey. That's not chocolate. That, oh, that's not that's chocolate. That's not chocolate. I don't know a honey chocolate yeah, bar. I okay, know. next one. Okay, so I've only got five clues for each one. But uh -oh. by the way, S clues for each one. I I've got S clues for each one. But by the time you get to the last one, I made sure you would. You know. say the name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, last one, the last one is the name. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the next one, mountain. Toblerone. Yep. Oh, you got it. Oh, Toblerone. Why honey? Because uh, there's there's uh like honey in it, like honey, oh, honey nougat yeah, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, thing yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, the next one. I almost said the name of the candy. <laughs> peanut M and M's. <laughs> oh crap! Crap! It's something that has peanut M and M's. In it. <laughs> Many Skittles. No. Mike and Ike. No. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> Crunch. 
Bunch of crunch. Bunch of crunch. No. Okay. So how about this? You only get one guess per clue. Okay. Per right. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Rainbow. I said it already, but it's not Smarties. What was the second clue? Many crunch rainbow. Oh, I guess you don't crunch Skittles. Many crunch rainbow. Nerds. <gasps> Greg's oh. got it. Nerds. So far, you've you've both gotten it on the third, third one. one. Okay. Okay. So this next one, love. No sweethearts. Mm-mm. Valent times <laughs> <laughs> candy. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the concept of marriage, <laughs> <laughs> babies. <laughs> foil, love foil. Love. Yeah, love foil, the way I do it. Uh, <laughs> love foil. Save love. it for later. Foil. Uh, York peppermint patty cake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hershey's Kisses. <gasps> Greg's got Damn it. Greg. it. All right, so Greg has two. You only have one. Okay, this next one. Round. Uh, Reese's. Me. Greg's fingers. <laughs> Reese's. No. Colorful. Skittles. No. What the? <laughs> oh, God, what was that candy that the kids said that was I I? <laughs> oh. Uh, is it Smarties? <laughs> no. Okay. Wonka. Oh, 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 oh everlasting gob. You're oh, both wrong. Damn it. It's not shock tarts or everlasting gob stuffers. Old. He already said Smarties <laughs> and you said no. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Can you go through the clues one more time? Round. Uh huh. Colorful. Wonka. Old. Violet Beauregard. Um, uh, bottle caps. You already had your guess this round, didn't you? Oh, but Is I got it right. Bottle caps? You didn't get it right. Oh. All right, you get bottle caps. That's not right, but you're, that's your guess. This is the last clue. Okay. This one should give it away. Clothing. Buttons. You buttons. gave me the answer. Yeah, the buttons. You, you accepted me. Uh, yeah. We were talking about that before we started. Over. You inseminated me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're back to the love guess. <laughs> oh, now we're tied. It's tied at two. This is, oh, the, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the last tie one. This is the tiebreaker. Is it tiebreaker? Um. <laughs> Everlasting tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chewy. Gummy bears. Mm-mm. Licorice. Mm-mm. Colorful. It wasn't gummy bears. Yeah. <laughs> Spree. Oh. That was the eye eye candy. Yeah, though. that was the eye. Chewy, chewy and colorful. colorful. <laughs> Just say something chewy and colorful. Gummy worms. <laughs> uh, you guys, you guys, gummy bears, gummy worms, <laughs> <laughs> gummy sharks. <laughs> Boardwalk. What? Okay. Say, I'm sorry. Chewy, say, colorful boardwalk. Chewy, colorful boardwalk. So something walk. sold like like at a fair. I mean, the fall under chewy. the boardwalk. I mean, a funnel cake is all of those I was things. Say cotton uh-huh. candy. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's not chewy. Uh uh-uh. You got this. Don't root him on. He doesn't got this. <laughs> you want to win? <laughs> I don't. You could pass, and go- we could go to the next clue. Just say a candy, dude. Bubble gum. No. Okay. <laughs> you should have passed. <laughs> <laughs> that made you sound really dumb. <laughs> okay, so the next two are. You might want to answer fast because these might give it away. Pulled. What? Pulled. Pulled. P-U-L-L-E-D. Taffy. Yeah, Greg got it. That's a great <laughs> candy. The next one was going to be salt water. Oh, I would have said sharks again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's the game. That was uh, Greg is our winner. So yeah, that's our Carlos Quinto. First Mexican candy we've yeah. done. First, First dip into candy. Mexico. And I don't think it'll be the last. <laughs> nope, that's the only no. Mexican candy. <laughs> A strong showing from uh, south of the border. Yeah. Or if you're listening to this in Mexico, in within the border. In the border. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, thanks for listening to all of our uh, nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Adios, mi amigos. Goodbye, baby. Oh, I was oh. going to do it, baby. God. I tabooed him. <laughs> <laughs> Adios, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Greg is taking my bitch. <laughs> <laughs>